In this problem, we're interested in a viscometer. A viscometer is a device to measure viscosity. And so what it does is it produces a fluid flow that is as simple and as reproducible as possible. Um, and based on this, we measure either a force or a moment. And from this, we calculate the viscosity of the fluid. So what we have is a situation that's uh, pictured just here below, where we have a pot that is of cylindrical shape. And inside this pot, a cylinder is turning, is rotating. And we measure the moment um, exerted about the axis, the central axis of the cylinder. And from the moment, we want to deduce, we want to calculate uh, the viscosity of the fluid that's inside. What we're going to do is we're going to relate moment to viscosity. Uh, and to go through this, we need to go through the velocity of the fluid in between the two cylinders. And from the velocity, we deduce the shear inside the fluid. And from the shear, we calculate the moment. So let's take a look at the situation as seen from above, right as if we were looking on top of, of the two cylinders. We have the inner cylinder, which is like this, and the outer cylinder, which is like that. Um, and I'm reproducing here the two cylinders with the distance very much exaggerated. We have only two millimeters of distance in between the two cylinders, while the diameter of the inner cylinder is already 20 centimeters. Uh, so I'm greatly exaggerating this distance for clarity. But keep in mind, it's very small. Uh, the inner cylinder is rotating, so it's rotating perhaps with a velocity like this. Um, and so if we observe this from the point of view of the ground, of the outer cylinder, uh, then we're going to have a velocity distribution that looks like this. We have zero velocity on the outer wall, and at the inner wall, we have the velocity here of the inner wall, which is, in this case here, omega d. Um, divided by 2, omega d1 divided by 2 here. Um, what is the velocity in between those two points? So what is the velocity distribution in between those two? We don't know. Um, in fact, if the cylinder, inner cylinder turns fast enough, if the fluid has low enough viscosity, if the distance between the two is large enough, then the patterns, the flow patterns in between those two will be extremely complex and hardly uh, predictable. Uh, certainly not predictable by hand. Uh, but in the case where we have simple flow, certainly in the case where we want to have an instrument that measures viscosity, we want to have the simplest flow possible, um, then the patterns will be relatively simple. And the simplest pattern we can guesstimate, uh, we can think about in between those two, is a velocity distribution that is linear, like so. And so we will have a velocity everywhere that is increasing as we go closer to the inner cylinder. Now, this is the point of view from the outer cylinder, so from the point of view of the ground. Point of view, um, outer of the outer cylinder. But now if, you're, if we see the same thing, the same flow, but seen from the inner cylinder, it would look like this. We would have the inner cylinder, like that. Um, and now, we are not turning. It is the world which is turning, spinning around us. So that the velocity of the fluid here would be the velocity of the outer wall relative to us. And the velocity here would be zero. And so this triangle here that we had before, I'm going to try to have a straight line here. The triangle that we had before is flipped around like this. And this is the point of view that we are going to adopt. It's the point of view of the inner cylinder. Uh, it doesn't really matter which point of view you adopt. Uh, the result will be the same. Uh, but perhaps conceptually, it's easier to go with this. And what is the data that we know about the flow? Well, we know about omega, the rotation velocity. Uh, we know about the inner diameter, uh, the diameter of the inner cylinder. Uh, we know about h1, the total height of those two cylinders, which is in, in this case is 80 centimeters. Um, we know about the distance between the two, which I'm going to call uh, here delta r. And this is 2 millimeters. And um, we know the moment. And the moment is 0 0.9 or something newton meters. Um, and so what we're looking for is mu, is the viscosity, like so. So let's plot the data that we have. Um, on the diagram. So we start with a clear idea. We have here delta r. This would be here. 
surface distance will be delta r. I'm going to measure position inside the flow with a coordinate, which I'm going to call here um, r. And but my r doesn't start at the at the center of of the cylinder. It starts here at the edge, and this is r, uh, like this. Uh, this velocity inside the fluid I'm going to call u, like this. Um, yeah, this is pretty much it. This is this is enough to get started. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to calculate the velocity, well, predict the velocity, describe the velocity. And from the velocity, we want to have the shear. And once we have the shear, we want to calculate the moment. And once we have the moment, we relate this back to um, the viscosity, and we should have the problems, uh, the problem pocketed. All right. So the velocity, u, I'm going to write it as a function of r here. Um, and when r is zero here, my velocity is zero, so I always start at zero. Um, and then I'm going to add a, a constant multiplied by the distance r, because my velocity increases proportionately here. And this constant I'm going to call k, so I'm going to say u is zero plus a constant kr. Now, at uh, two points, I know the velocity. The, my boundary conditions in this case are that um, at um, at r is equal to zero, so when I'm on this skin here, yeah, my velocity is zero. u is equal to zero at r is equal to zero. And the second boundary condition is known when I'm at um, r is equal to capital delta r, like this. Uh, when I'm this point here, I'm in the outer cylinder. What is the velocity u? Well, this velocity here is nothing but the velocity of the inner wall that we saw from the point of view of the outer cylinder. And this velocity here is omega d divided by 2, so omega r. So this is omega d1 divided by 2. So I apply this second boundary condition here onto this function so that I get omega d1 divided by 2 um, is equal to 0 plus uh, k multiplied by r, but r in this case has the value capital delta r, like this. Um, and this allows me to find k. Uh, k is here um, omega d1 over 2 uh, divided by delta r, like this. Uh, let me rewrite this cleanly, um, like so. 2 delta r, like this. All right. Um, so now we plug this constant here back into the function for velocity that we guesstimated. And then we have here u um, is equal to omega d1 divided by 2 delta r here, r. So this delta r here, this is the fixed interval between the two cylinders. It's just a number. Uh, but this r here, this is the coordinate um, inside, in between the two, the two cylinders. So here we are. Again, I insist this is not uh, the result of a calculation. This is a result of an observation and guesstimate. Um, if the flow was complex in between the two cylinders, we would not be able, we would not have a method uh, to be able to figure out what the velocity is. Okay, based on this now, we're going to take a look at the moment. And the moment, uh, sorry, at the, at the shear stress. And the shear stress, tau, here, tau is um, the viscosity. Uh, multiply by the derivative of velocity with respect to distance. The distance is going to be y, sorry, it's going to be r here. This is the distance r that is moving away from the inner cylinder, and the velocity is going to be u. So let me fix this thing here. Let's get partial u, uh, partial r, like this. And so let's carry out this derivation. It's not very difficult. We have u partial over partial r of this whole expression that we had over there, which is omega d1 divided by 2 delta r, small r, like this. Um, and the derivative of a constant multiplied by r is just the constant, so that we have tau, the shear, is equal to just mu, omega d1 over 2 delta r, like so. All right, so we have the shear now. 
everywhere inside the fluid. Doesn't matter where you are inside the two cylinders. Um, in between those two, as a function of r, or as a function of height, uh, the shear is everywhere the same. Omega d1 over 2 pi r multiplied by the viscosity of the fluid. <clears throat> okay, so what about the moment? We done now the we have done the fluid mechanics part of the problem, where we look at velocity and shear, and now we have left uh, uh, simply an engineering, a mechanical engineering problem. The moment exerted around the inner cylinder is the sum of all the tiny moments over the whole area, um, and every one of those tiny moments is made of here um, the radius towards the surface ds every time yes um, the radius multiplied by the force and the force is tau ds here and the radius every time is the radius away from the center of the inner cylinder so from this center here towards here the inner cylinder surface and this surface here is d1 divided by 2 it is the inner radius so the radius in this case here is not a variable it is just a constant it is here d1 divided by 2 tau ds okay so we have to carry out this whole inter this whole integration here with respect to surface of every time the shear so comes the question what is a good ds what is a good infinitesis infinitely small what is a good very small surface uh, to pick on this inner cylinder uh, for this integral so let's take a look at the inner cylinder and let's represent it like this this is the inner cylinder like this it's not straight but um, uh, the basic idea is there we could take a tiny bit of area that's something like this it is a tiny bit of surface on there and it would have a height like so that could be dh and it could have here a little bit of circumference that would be here the radius d1 over 2 here multiplied by the angle d theta and so this would be here on here this would be here a very small angle d theta so we could take ds here ds let's call it ds1 uh, we could call it dh um, d1 over 2 d theta like this this could be one possibility another possibility would be to pick a whole vertical strip here like so of with the same width here d over 2 d theta uh, but with height finite height and so we could call it here ds2 here and this would be now the total height h1 d1 over 2 d theta why could we pick this because the shear does not depend on the position with height um, and so i could just pick already a piece of surface here a piece of area um, that has the complete height um, inside it i could also pick an alternative where i decide to take now a strip of cir circumference around the cylinder that has a height dh but then it has the whole circumference over there and so i could call it here ds3 is equal now to dh the tiny bit of height dh um, and then multiply by the circumference which is um, 2 pi d1 over 2. Nice. why could i do this because as i go around the cylinder the shear is everywhere the same it does not depend on where around the cylinder i am and so once you've done this you realize wait a second uh, why are we carrying out a complicated integral when the shear does not depend on circumference it does not depend on height it's everywhere the same i could just take the whole area in fact you could uh, because if you take a cylinder and everywhere on this cylinder the shear is the same you could just take the shear at one point and then multiply it by the whole area of the cylinder which is nothing but 2 pi r here circumference multiplied by the height as a rectangle you basically unwrap the cylinder into one rectangle and so we could just stop worrying about which infinitesimally small 
surface to take and just go back to our equation here um, and say that m is because shear does not depend on area it is just d1 over 2 tau s the area the surface area of the inner cylinder and this is not very difficult to calculate so let's move down here we say now m is equal to d1 over 2 tau i'm going to replace it by the expression we derived above and so tau is mu omega d1 over 2 delta r let's put it here mu omega d1 over 2 delta r here and then the surface area here is going to be uh, the circumference multiplied by the height so that's 2 pi or the radius is d1 over 2 um, divided by um, sorry multiplied multiplied let me rewrite this 2 pi d1 over 2 multiplied by the height h1 like so okay let's uh, simplify this I got a couple of twos that go away here so I could just remove this and I think all the rest remains like so and so let's try to pick mu which is interesting for us and put it right at the end over there and uh, try to deal with the rest first I have um, on the top I have pi and I have omega which is the rotation speed uh, and I have d1 cube I think is all and at the bottom I have 4 delta r like this and right at the end I have mu and this is my moment let me just check that I haven't forgotten anything um, that's correct and so this is the moment as a function of viscosity this is the solution we're looking for um, we have the moment expressed as a function of viscosity and what we're looking for in this particular problem is the viscosity given the moment so of course we're going to reverse this equation here and write mu mu here is now um, 4 delta r m like this let me rewrite this cleanly it's not very readable divided by pi omega t1 cube like this and now it's just a matter of putting numbers and so we have as numbers if i remember correctly but also uh, look up on my notes on the side i have uh, 4 multiplied delta r is 2 millimeters 2 times 10 to the power minus 3 um, the moment is 0 0.9 newton meters and then at the bottom i have pi omega be very careful omega has to be expressed in radians per second we don't have radians per second we have rotations per minute we have 150 rotations per minute 150 rotations so one rotation would be 2 pi radians and then per minute one minute is 60 seconds so 2 pi divided by 60 um, and then I have here the inner diameter um, which is 0 0.2 meters and this is cubed here and if you put this into your calculator you should get 2.27 times 10 to the power minus 2 Pascal seconds which are the units of, of viscosity uh, pro tip do not try to remember the units of viscosity always look up a diagram or a reference data that you have available around you um, to to figure out what the unit is it's not worth remembering um, quick check how big is this uh, viscosity it's a very big viscosity numbers for viscosity are usually very small uh, this is very sticky this is typically oil um, very thick oil or syrup or honey something like this it would be very sticky and this is the viscosity so coming back again uh, through the whole process you can see that the first step we have to do is to guesstimate the velocity distribution based on this velocity uh, we derivate the shear the shear distribution and once we have the shear the fluid mechanics part is done and we do the engineering part and the engineering just adds up forces and moments uh, and this is how you obtain the viscosity uh, in a simple cylindrical viscometer.